Hey guys, welcome back to the Unfiltered Gamer Kickstarter board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is called Heroes Welcome by Monkey Jump Games. It's for two to five players, takes about an hour to an hour and a half play, and ages 14 and up. In the game Heroes Welcome, Mergen Merchants of Dragon's Reach, the game is going to be involving you as a shopkeeper in town. So much like those games which are going out and collecting loot and dungeons and all that and treasure, like a little dungeon crawl, then what happens in this game is actually the aftermath of that. You're playing a shopkeeper and your objective is to arm the enemies that the heroes are fighting and then sell to the heroes all the uh everything you would, they would need to go out and hunt again so kind of a uh, way in which you're gonna be not only helping the monsters but helping the heroes but in turn it's really just you trying to make as much money as possible and that's what the game is about collecting as much money from this specific town trading those in for victory points which are actually going to be currency for your hometown which are worth far more just not able to use them in this current location however that's the idea though is once you've done finished the game all the money that you've made is going to go to the other town and you're going to be um, very very rich and very very happy because of that and the game is going to revolve around turns in which you're going to choose to go to certain shops having the heroes buy certain things of yours selling it to them then them getting different items and leveling up and whatnot just to go back and do it again whoever has the most points at the end of Heroes Welcome is going to be the winner let me go and show the game so here we have Heroes Welcome and as you can see there's a lot of stuff in the game let's go over all the different things first of all there's going to be coins you'll be using for this specific town secondly you've got these little coins here which are actually going to be worth victory points and currency for your home location even more value than these guys obviously and then you also got eager customers these are the guys you're going to be selling things to you can sell to dragons as Asmo asmodeus uh vampires and all kinds of great stuff cave trolls and you're gonna be selling um them stuff so that the heroes these guys here are going to go out and fight them this is the hero token and it's going to go through this dungeon crawl aspect of the game it'll end up on the town gate and then they're going to be moving across these little towns here now towns are actually going to be these things here as well as these ones here and you're going to be creating more towns upgrading current ones and so on and so forth making the heroes move around you've also got these things here which are actually for your herbalists herbalists will actually make these guys gain levels but for a short period of time you'll have these tokens to start the game here you're going to have these shop closed icons whenever you go to a shop with your heroes and have them do something you're going to close the shop so they can't go there until the end of the round which they go through this and do it again you're also going to have two separate tiles a tiles and b tiles here and they are going to to be upgrading these things here and the as the game progresses the tower the uh, areas are going to become more and more valuable and stronger these are the tokens to start the game off there's a ring of going first to indicate the first player and everybody else is going to get one of these and they're all worth an ethereum point you're also going to start off with a mastery and a character and these characters have specific abilities as well as it tells you a little bit about their starting inventory now you can also gain more at masteries as you can see here there's a plethora of them as well as scam cards throughout the game you're going to be getting these cards here you can play them on your turn and they're going to do different things like give you more additional money let you go to shops that are closed let you go to guilds that are closed as well as uh using this thing here this is the first turn merchant master and it'll go around clockwise for each player you've got the black market over here where you're going to start with your little um all the little items here and actually two bags full of different items that you'll be pulling out and using throughout the game to give to heroes to pay or to take from heroes to buy and sell as well as to give these guys uh specific items to have them have better weapons so that the heroes can go ahead and fight them you're also going to use these little trackers here that will allow you to determine how much how high your rank is on these different masteries throughout the game which are all going to start off at level one with one specific mastery they'll come with the game board as well as a rule book and this wonderful little box here in the game heroes welcome so to begin the game with heroes welcome you're each going to select a hero or a shopkeep they are all going to have their own unique mastery as well as a special ability that says something like gain a point as long as you don't use any green charge when crafting weapons for the monsters you're also going to be getting five gold coins plus a single gold coin for each player that is before you so if there's three players and you're the third player you're going to get two additional gold coins making it seven instead of just five you're going to be getting one of these cards here which is a reference card that tells you what you can do on your turn there's four options you can do on your turn you can run a shop you can craft for a customer you can visit a guild or you can call for the round to end if you visit a shop you simply are going to move your the heroes from one space to another as long as it's adjacent and then do it that shop's ability is then you're going to close the shop 
Uh, another thing you can do is craft for a customer, which is there's maybe at least four customers at the beginning of every round, and they're all going to have their own unique requirements in which you're going to use those items and or those minerals, and you're going to give it to them so they can craft a weapon for them, and then they're going to pay you in gold and or victory points. After that, you can also do a visit a guild action, which is choose an open guild anywhere on the board and do whatever it says. Whenever you go to any location, you're going to use one of these little uh, 3D close signs, which is going to signify that the game, the, the area in which you've uh, taken your action Action is no longer usable until the next period or the next round. You can also call for the round to end. This is basically what happens when you have nothing better to do because everybody can choose to pass and you are yourself because you called for it to end is going to get a scam card. However, people can choose to not allow the round to end by simply giving you a material or a mineral of their choice and then it would be their turn and you would continue and on your turn you can keep calling for the round to end taking minerals from people until everyone passes and allows it to end and you take the scam card. When that happens, you take off, um, you go ahead and take this little character here off of the board from the town area and you place it in the dungeon crawl area. There's a bunch of things that happen during this period, but it's mainly the cleanup phase. You're going to have them level up and skill up. You're going to uh, have them gain levels. You're going to have them uh, collect loot per hero for each level they have. You're going to open all the shops and guilds, removing all of the close signs. If there are fewer than four customers on the board, you're going to fill them back up. Uh, and you're going to draw three and fill, uh, you're going to draw three if there's fewer than four. Then you can expand the town by the first player, whoever has the master merchant is going to take one of the, uh, uh, one of the tiles from the top of the deck and place it down where it allows you to do so. Pass this clockwise, and then you're going to return to the town with your heroes. Then once again, the round will begin again, and players are going to continue to go across the board doing all their actions until the round once again ends, rinse, and repeat. After the final bad guy has been given a shop item that will signify the end of the round, and it'll show you this little game over in which the dungeon crawl will happen one more time, and then you're going to score points, tally up all the points as well as bonus points, and whoever has the most wins. Let me show you a little bit about the setup and how a turn can go. We're back to the board again and as you can see I've got ahead and set everything up for two players. You got four customers over here. This player here is going to start with the master merchant and everybody's going to get five gold as well as a starting item. This is going to be flipped a uh, face. You're going to draw from a bag and whoever gets the plus ring of going first is going to be the one who starts the round off with the master merchant. Every other player in turn order is going to receive a bonus coin. Uh, plus one, plus two, plus three, all the way to five players. You're all going to get your masteries and set it to one, make sure you do that, as well as checking your special ability. This says he doesn't want to use orcs. If he doesn't use orc steel, he'll get a bonus. And if this guy doesn't use red shards, he'll get a bonus as well. Bonuses in purple mean victory points. The gold over here is going to represent gold coins, and there is different variations of all the different uh, currency. You're also going to have this uh, black market here, which you're going to take five from one of the bags. And this bag is going to start with all of these things in here and place them here. Every hero is going to get two of these guys here. And the rest will go in here. Whenever any of these get used, they're going to go into the pink bag. This is like the scrap bag in which you'll be using this for either scam cards as well as whenever you do. There's a couple other things you can use it for, but generally it's going to be for the scam cards. But yeah, scam cards and the black market here. This is also where you'll be pulling from the scrap bag. The rest of them are just going to be used throughout the uh, setup of the game as well as whenever we go around to the dungeon crawl. The heroes are going to start off here. And on the first player's turn, they get to choose any of these locations that they want and do whatever they want to do on them. It'll have specific things. They can choose to move once every single time and it's always going to be adjacent or they can choose to simply go to one of these guilds. So the Builder's Guild is always a good choice to start off with because it allows you to take another turn as well as building a future shop. So you can select any of these guys here, the three that are laid here, as well as the A's. And of course, as you go throughout the game, it'll go down to B's here, which are more progressively um, powerful. And you're going to select them based on what it says. This says you can put on the field or on the wizard's lab. This this one says just the peddler and this one says just the flea market. The field is going to be anything on the outside and the wizard's lab is specifically one of these guys here. Uh, if it's not currently there, that means it's somewhere in the deck so you'll have to place it on the field and you can choose any location you want. We'll just place it right there, which signifies that, that maybe on the next, the next turn the next player can go here if they want. Uh, so this is closed but that first player is still going to get another turn and he'll simply move. Now it says over here he can pay one coin to one person to get one item that is either a circle or a square. And he'll simply do that. He'll go ahead and spend his five coins. He'll get four back. 
you'll choose one of these guys and he'll take an item. Now he wants specifically uh, Ethereum and he also doesn't want Orc Steel. So there is no, there's one Orc Steel so he doesn't want that. He can just take a red shard. He'll add it to his little pool there. After he selected his shop, it moves to the next player and the next player would decide what they want to do. There's the Minstrel's Guild where you can discard an item to move the heroes in a dish to any shop that's open and run it. You can choose the Artisan's Guild in a three player game. You can actually go ahead and add this as, as, add it as well. So there's two of them, but in a two-player game it's simply going to be just this shop if a P or a hero or a, a shopkeeper were to choose to go into this location he would simply take another mastery and add it to his stack why does he want masteries well because when he builds things if he uses the required necessary materials he'll gain bonus points so if he uses three ethereum here uh, on any of the, one of these guys he's going to get plus two victory points so that's pretty useful as the game goes on uh, this merchant skill is it lets you draw two scam cards and scam cards have abilities here this one says that they can move an additional space and this one is the late shift which lets you go to an after hours shop meaning what if the shop is closed they can go to it and then you got the black market this says buy one of these for two or buy two of them for six you can choose either one of these both of them have the option of going to them any of these shops as well as the goldsmith guild pay two from uh, gain two gold from the bank and then you can pay one victory point to gain five from the bank. So you can get seven for a single victory point, which is pretty good. And as players go to their locations, like I said, you're going to go to a closed shop. The next player can go, maybe he'll go here, one gold to one person and get another item. So he'll dump his as well and he'll get four. And then he can go ahead and pick an item. He doesn't want red shards and he wants green ones. So he'll take a green shard there. The last thing you can do is the workshop and that lets you craft an artifact for an eager customer. So uh, if he wanted to on this guy, he could choose to pick this guy here so he can go here and um, buy anything he wants. I'll take this. Now this never gets closed. You can always go here. This thing says it costs one circular item and then one of any kind. He can go ahead and get rid of these guys here. Whenever you get rid of your starting item, it just goes to the box. It doesn't go to the bag though. But this one here would go to the bag of uh, empty, that's more empty, the scrap bag would go in here. From there, he's going to collect three victory points as well as collecting four gold. And you can just look at these on the backs and just put them down as one, two, and three. These are kind of hidden information. He can hold this or store it or get rid of it. It doesn't matter because he's going to get his gold anyway. And he can take this. And then the next player will keep going. And you're going to keep going as you move around the, the shops. Make sure they're closed. This guy was closed. And this one here is an herbalist shop. It says you can um, give one of these to each of these guys for a gold. So he could, if he wanted to, give one of each of these to all the guys that are available. And if he does that, he puts them over here. This is going to increase their player level and in turn increase the amount of loot they're going to get during the dungeon crawl phase. But that's the basic idea of just the simple turns. After they've all chosen to pass, nobody has cho chosen to give another, so if this guy chose to pass and this guy didn't want to give either of these two things to him, the round would end and these guys would come back here in which they would kill all their enemies. And also whenever you buy an item, these are going to go over here to the well-armed enemies area. So. This guy here, he had bought one item, so he just choose one of these at random, and they have different things. And uh, you're gonna flip these over during the dungeon crawl. So this is a red guy is going to level up. So you'll put this on the red guy, and uh, now he's leveled up. So if multiple people buy these, the multiple multiple of these are going to be used throughout the game. Uh, after he's done his, his his levels up, he's going to go ahead and collect a loot per hero level. So this guy has two, so he's going to get two loot. And the next guy is at level one, so he's going to get one loot. And so is the other guy. Just like that, pretty simple, right? You're going to open up all the shops, so take off all these closed signs from the guilds and the shops, and uh, return all the potions, these guys here from the characters, back to the pool. If there's fewer than four customers, draw three more. So in this case, there would be fewer than four. So one, two, three, opening up the variety of more customers you can purchase uh, items for. And then you can expand the town. Anybody who has the master merchant is gonna select the top cart, top tile here, take it and then place it on the field where it allows you to, the field or the provisioner. So we'll put on the provisioner here. Pass the master merchant to the next player and return the guys to town, in which case you're gonna keep going. Now, as the shop items are continually bought out and the arm enemies are more well armed and the game continues, then the heroes are going to level up more and finally after the last boss because these are all put in order from one to I believe was it 14 or something 
uh, what's to say? I don't know the exact number of it. Oh, 16. So once this guy has been uh, sold to, the game is going to end. At what point you're going to count up all the item, all the all the uh, victory points that are, are in purple, as well as add any of the bonuses, because there's a couple bonuses throughout the game that you can get, as well as sometimes you're going to be able to buy, at the end of the game you're going to be able to buy certain items if you have leftover uh, items here, and uh, then count the points and see who wins the game. And that's the basic idea for Heroes Welcome. I'll go ahead and talk about it a little more and get into these scam cards as well. All right, so a couple caveats before we get into the review of the game. First of all, the Artisan Guild, not only do you get new masteries, but you can also choose to level up an existing mastery, making it all the more powerful. So in turn, this one here says three Ethereum is going to give you plus two victory points whenever you craft three Ethereum with an item. This here says plus four victory points for four and plus seven for, for five. So you can do that if you want as well. Not only that, but there's a bunch of scam cards, and they do different things. You can use them on your turn. Sometimes they'll tell you you can use them whenever you want. It's just going to be depending on the card, though. Place a closed sign on any shop. Move your heroes in additional space. Normally, you can only move one space a turn with your hero, but with that card, you can play it and move two spaces. Midnight Oil lets you visit a guild that is closed. A late Shift lets you visit a shop that is closed. And uh, Bait and Switch. This one lets you place uh, an item from the bank on each ego oh sorry place a victory point on each ego customer from now on those customers require an additional item to be put on it but you get an additional victory point when you collect those customers when you give those customers the items they need and there's some more of the different type of scam cards in the game all the characters have their own unique masteries as well as their own unique items they don't want to craft but that is the basic idea right now what do i think about heroes welcome well this game is a worker placement style game that has a couple of little unique aspects to it as well as a building of the map so you're going to be going around building. Now you would obviously think that like the guild, Builder's Guild is going to be the best option most of the time, which it is. However, there's certain times where you don't want to build because you might not be able to get to the locations that you kind of are putting down, which might help your opponents in turn. So even that one, which seems kind of like an obvious bet, might not be. Selling the item, this the theme is amazing. Selling items to monsters to have the heroes fight them, to take the stuff back, to then sell to you so you can sell back again is great because you're basically this terrible merchant who's like just in it all for the money and I like that aspect of the game you're not playing as the heroes you're playing as the merchants who are interested in screwing over the heroes as best as possible to make as much money as possible because taking the currency from this town converting it into victory points which is just other currency for your real town and then getting all of that money <laughs> it's just really cool I love the theme of that the artwork is great the different things like the clothes signs little unique little 3d clothes signs that's a must-have it's so cool putting them on the, the shops like oh the shop is closed you can't have it anymore and the scam cards work well too making shops get closed pretty much instantaneously just before your opponents are going to buy something and there's a lot of screwing around in this game but it's overall casual which is nice it has that free-flowing feel to it it has a little bit of that comp competitive edge because that's really what the game is at heart but honestly the theme is what shines through most often in this game Bu buying from the black market can be expensive that might be useful to get the specific item you want the towns are going the town is going to progress to the point where the abilities are going to be stronger and stronger so even if you're in last place you still have an opportunity to catch up the games i played of this so far whenever i was playing i'm focusing on the guy who's winning because i want to get above him next thing i know is the person who was in dead last has skyrocketed up because we didn't pay attention to them you have to be very aware of what's going on throughout this entire game also the monsters get more powerful and really they're not you're not fighting them, you're just selling things to them. But you need to make sure you have the right goods to sell them because you need those victory points at the end of the game. Being able to also, at the end of the game, if you have a bunch of extra materials left over, it's kind of sucky when you have a bunch of stuff that's left over they don't have victory points for because you missed that one turn. You're like, well, now I got a bunch of stuff I can't use and now I'm at negative uh, four points to be the winner. However, in this one, it let you buy certain items to give to the monsters as additional victory points, which can net you the game. And in fact, it does on the occasion. So pick of those last bits of item makes a difference on your turn you don't just go uh it doesn't really matter at the end of my turn what's going to happen because i'm definitely going to lose no up until every point in this game you feel like you have an opportunity of winning sometimes you feel like you already are winning and then oh suddenly next thing you know the, the scales have tilted and that happens quite a bit uh it works with two it works with three four 
five. I've had no issues playing with this game. I think its sweet spot is probably three or four, though. The five gets a little longer, but it's still not bad. And at two players, it's more of a one-on-one -on -one competition. I think three and four, though, is what I really like it at. Overall, though, the game is excellent. I'm keeping this in my collection. It gets my stamp of approval, and I think you should definitely check out Heroes Welcome, an amazing game. All right, guys, thanks for watching the Unfiltered Gamer Kickstarter board game review. If you like this video, then check out the rest of our videos here on YouTube. Like, subscribe, and comment. It all helps. We do greatly appreciate it, as well as checking out our website, unfilteredgamer.com. Tons of blog posts, giveaways, and Kickstarter lists, as well as checking out Heroes Welcome. This game is stunningly fun, and if you like worker placement, you're going to like this. It's in the description below. All right, guys, that's all I got for you this time. And as always, I look forward to seeing you next time.